will arise. Hey, good morning, good morning. Now, I don't want to sing that song too long. It's way out of my range. Well, like most songs, it's way out of my range. <laughs> it's a great song, though. Raise a hallelujah. Well, listen, it is, today happens to be Tuesday, all right? And we are live. It's 8 o'clock. We are in our 21 days of fearless living, and I am so excited about it. So excited. So I hope you're doing good. Hope you're up and at them. If not, maybe you're listening, you know, listening to this a little bit later. Hey, that's great, too. Whatever works for you. God bless you. We love you. I'm so excited to teach you what I got for you today because we are in this series, 21 Days of Fearless Living, because we want you to live in this world but not be fearful, not be bound by fear. You don't have to. You don't have to walk around by fear. And especially, you know, in our current status of where we are as a culture, as a society, um, what's going on in America, so many people are running around fearful. You don't have to be. You don't have to listen to all that stuff. You can focus on the Word of God and get victory each and every day. You've heard me say it before, and I'm going to say it again. It doesn't matter if bread goes to $500 a loaf. I will own a bakery store, praise God. That's the mentality you have to have. You have to have a mentality that I'm going to win no matter what. So what is the mentality we want to talk about today? And we want, we want to really, really just focus in on and dial in on. All right. Here is a mentality of fear that's hidden but it really does affect the way you live your life. And here's the mentality. I just can't hold it together. I just can't hold it together. Now, this, again, has many different forms. I'm losing it. Uh, this is too much. I can't believe I'm in this situation. I can't make these decisions. I'm, I'm just really, honestly, I'm just deadlocked in my life, and I don't know what to do, and it's just too much for me. I just can't hold it together. I've heard people say, if it, this keeps up, I'm going to snap. No, you're not. If this keeps up, I just can't take it. No, that's not true. Here's the reality. You are much stronger than you would ever give you, yourself credit for. You really are. You are much stronger. Now, I'm not talking about you in particular by yourself. I'm talking about if you're a believer and you're in Christ, you are way stronger than you would ever think that you are. You can do things that you would never imagine that you can do simply because God lives on the inside of you. His power, his strength lives on the inside of you. But how do we get there? How do we get there? Well, there's a verse. I use it often. It's in 2 Timothy 1.7, and it's very, very powerful. Now, most of the time I focus on the fear aspect, but, but I want you to listen to the first part of this verse before I talk about fear. Here's what it says. For God has not given you a spirit of fear, okay, but a power, love, and a sound mind. All right, that's, that's the simple version of that in the King James or the New King James. But listen to it in the Amplified Bible. And here's what I want you to hear, the well-balanced part. Here's what it says. For God has not given us a spirit of timidity, of cowardice, or of fear. God's not given you fear. In other words, there's several things in this. Number one, fear is a spirit, okay? You get around other people operating in fear, you're going to get fearful. Fear is a spirit. Have you ever been in a place where there's just an atmosphere of fear running around? Listen, you want to stay away from that, all right? God's not given us a spirit of fear, but he has given us a spirit of power, of love, all right? So we want to focus on God's power, focus on God's love, and sound judgment and personal discipline. Notice that, sound judgment, personal discipline. That's such an empower, empowering thing to you and I. Listen to what it says. Abilities that result in a calm, well-balanced mind and self-control. So self-control, well-balanced and calm. That's what I want you to hear. So fear will give you the opposite of those. Fear will get you wound up like a three-day clock. I do it. You do it. We all do it. Fear gets you wound up. Watch this. Uh, a, a, a spirit of power, not bound by fear, will give you calm, well-balanced, and self-control. That's what we want in our life. So as you begin to think about this, I, I wrote down some things and tell me what you think about this. Thoughts feed expectations, okay? Thoughts feed expectations. Expectations feed manifestation, what we see, what happens in our life. Manifestations imprint on our mind 
forming habits and character, which consist of patterns of behavior. So we get into these patterns of behavior thinking, I'm going to lose it. I'm got not, I can't hold it together. There's no way it can happen for me. I'm just going to snap. I'm, no, no. You're much stronger than that. God's not giving you a spirit of fear. Fear is what's driving that. But he's giving you a spirit of well-balanced, peaceful, calm, all right? Uh, self-controlled mind. That's what he's given you. So how do we begin to take control over this? Because you are not going to lose it today. It's going to be a good day. Praise God. Jesus is still on the throne and we're going to work this thing out. So how do we do it? Number one, make a decision. All right. Make decisions. A lot of times I find myself, and maybe you do too, getting frustrated because I, I, I just don't know what to do. What I've come to find out is, man, go with my gut, follow the Holy Spirit, and just go with it. A lot of times we get deadlocked because we can't make a decision. I'm going to lose it. No, I think the choice to keep my mind well balanced, and I'm going to make a decision about whatever seems to hinder me. All right? So remember, no decision is a decision to not decide. Okay? But it doesn't change anything. I used to tell Whitney all the time, Whitney probably more so than Mike, nothing changes till you confront it. Let's confront what's bothering you. Let's confront what's holding you back. And let's make a decision to move ourselves forward. Okay? So there's number one. Number two, check this out. Realize that you are not alone. There's something powerful about feeling alone that moves you in the wrong direction. Remember, I think about it uh, again, history buff, uh, Hitler isolated the Jews to make them feel all alone because there's something that the enemy has figured out. If he can make you feel all alone, then guess what? He can defeat you. He can defeat you. If you know, man, I'm not in this by myself. Somebody is in this with me. Can I tell you, you are going to go a lot, lot further. Um, Hebrews 13, 5 says, for he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You are not alone because Christ is with you and you will never be alone. From this day to the day I see Jesus face to face, I will never be alone. I'm not in this by myself. So there's the second thing I want to share. Here's the third one. God holds all things together when we turn it over to him. Listen to this, 2 Timothy 1.12. For this reason, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded he is able to keep me in what I have committed unto him until that day. Now, that is a lot of wording in that, but here's what I want you to hear. Again, uh, um, God holds all things together when we turn it over to him. Listen to what it says. I believed and I am persuaded that he is able to keep, keep, hold it together, what I have committed unto him. Remember, when you feel like you're losing it and you don't know what to do, turn it over to him. You remember, I feel like I've worn you out with the Philippians verse that whenever we have problems, we turn them into a, to, we turn them over to God and he gives us his peace. When we have problems, we give him that, he gives us his peace. It's a, it's a truth to live by, Okay. I believe and am persuaded he is able to keep which I have committed unto him. So commit that thing to him and he will keep it, all right? Here's number four. You ready? God upholds the universe. Why can't he uphold you? <laughs> that seems pretty simple, isn't it? If God upholds the universe, he can uphold you. Listen to this. He is the image. This is Colossians 1.15. I love Colossians. The entire, entire chapter is absolutely awesome. Here's what it says. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created. I covered this verse last weekend in our services. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are in the earth. Visible, invisible. Whether they be thrones, dominions, principalities, or powers. Watch this. All things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things and in him all things consist or hold together. Remember, God is holding all things together. And if he is upholding all things, he can uphold you, praise God. He will uphold you. All right? Here's the last one. Fill your mind with what God has accomplished for you. I love this verse, and this is the verse of the day in the sense of what I want you to focus on. This is what I want to pour into you and make sure you understand. You are not going to lose it today. You can hold it together today, all right? Listen to it, Psalms 138. I would commit this verse to memory. It's absolutely awesome. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. I love that. Just think about that part right there. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. 
Everything in my life, God is working towards perfection, praise God. Not that I've arrived, I don't even claim to, but God is working it. He is going to perfect those things concerning me. You need to walk around and say that today. Lord, you're perfecting those things that are concerning me. You're perfecting those things that are concerning me. Listen to the next part. Your mercy, O Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the works of your hands. In other words, Lord, what I put my hands to is your, your work. So, Father, perfect those things which concern the works of my hands. All right? So listen to it again. This is Psalms 138. And it's a verse that's in the Bible. A lot of people don't know it. Um, but it really is a powerful verse. Um, I think about, we have a certain individual in our church who prays this verse all the time. And I think it's absolutely outstanding. Here's what it says. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. So there it is. Lord, perfect those things concerning me. Watch this. Your, your mercy, O oh Lord, endures forever. Do not forsake the works of your hands. All right? So listen, we're going to claim that verse all day today. Lord, perfect those things concerning me. Perfect those things concerning me. I can hold it together. I will hold it together. Why? Because you're perfecting me. And I'm, I'm refusing not to make a decision. I'm refusing not to trust you. I'm not in this alone. I'm not in this by myself. Um, God, you uphold all things so you can hold on to me. And you're going to hold it together with me. And you are, you are so with me in this thing. So praise God. Hey, I hope that helps you. I hope that blesses you. If you know somebody struggling, hey, make sure you forward these uh, t little teachings to them to encourage them and lift them up. And I pray that you're having a great day so far. And I pray that the rest of your day is going to be absolutely outstanding. And listen, we're on day nine. Day nine. Day nine of our 21 days, and I can't wait till tomorrow. I got a good one for you, all right? But you are not going to lose it today, so let me pray for you. Father, I thank you for each and every person under the sound of my voice. I praise you and thank you for what you're doing in their life. And Lord, they are going to hold it together today. They're going to walk in you, and you're going to perfect those things concerning them today. Father, we recognize we have not arrived, but we are in a process. And I'm so thankful that you are patient with our process. And Father, I pray that we will just look forward to you doing their great work in us and perfecting us in each and every area. We love you so much and we thank you for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, hey, God bless you. I hope you were blessed. I need to rest my voice today. I don't know if you can tell, but I need to rest my voice and not, not because of any other thing. Of, man, we got a lot of great things going on and I was in meetings a lot yesterday. I'm so excited about what's happening in our church and around. Uh, what, God's doing big stuff, guys. Don't forget it, all right? Well, hey, God bless you. I love you. Make sure you like. Make sure you share this with someone who needs the encouragement today, okay? God bless you. I love you. I will see you tomorrow, same time, 8 o'clock. I look forward to it. I'll see you.